We tell you how Ole Miss defeats the Penn State Nittany Lions in tomorrow's Peach Bowl. And this is the last time we will do one of these Why Ole Miss Wins episodes this year. And that that makes me sad. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Also did a little stint at WSMV. Um, Thanks for joining us today. Today on the show, we'll tell you how Ole Miss is going to defeat the Penn State Nittany Lions in tomorrow's Peach Bowl. As I mentioned, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. We have a lot of stuff to get to, and this is this is going to be an interesting game, honestly, and the way it goes. And these are the three keys that I think I'm going to talk about in today's show. First of all, tempo, tempo, tempo. We'll talk about how that fits in the football game, especially going against a team that has not seen it from a league that does not use it. Also, Penn State's run game needs to get contained, and Ole Miss needs to get um, Penn State into third and six plus. That's going to be a major key in this game, and Ole Miss just has the better skill players in this football game. Ole Miss has the better quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, and you have to think that that's just going to pay dividends in a game like this. We'll talk about that as well. But we start off with tempo. And tempo is the most important piece of this football game. It cannot be overstated. It's at the point where Anthony Poindexter, whenever he was asked about Ole Miss's offense yesterday, has said the first challenge is the tempo, but we haven't seen it on a consistent basis like they do it. They also have depth of receiver, the production they have, three guys with over 700 yards receiving, and they have a really good running back core. Coach Kiffing does a really good job and the guys getting the guys ready to play. Tempo is going to be the most important piece. And that quote right there, I hate, I don't want to act like I'm inside his head or anything, but he's talking about the time it takes between plays for Ole Miss to snap the football. That's the tempo he's referring to. And that is going to be a massive key against Penn State. If you're not used to seeing it, it, it affects the way you call games. It affects the way you substitute players. And when you have a Penn State team that we talked about, Zach Kaseko, having players on a pitch count, whether Andre Carter or Adisa Isaac or those guys, a couple of cornerbacks, tempo is going to be an important thing when you can't substitute players, when you can't match up. You can't put your running um, defensive lineman in on rundowns and your passing defensive lineman in on pass downs. It's a situation to where you just have to play. And then you mix that in the fact with it coming so quickly, busts tend to happen when they don't see it very often with the lack of substitution going against tired legs. And you can see why tempo is going to be a major cog in this football game. Now, to get the tempo going, Ole Miss needs to get first downs. They need to get that first first down of the drive to really crank it up. So we'll see how that will go. Will it look like Ole Miss against Texas A&M, who has an explosive defense just like Penn State does, or will it look like Georgia, who kind of figured it out? Now, one thing that could be interesting in this game with the tempo and everything else is Lane Kiffin is possibly the best script writer in all of college football. And knowing that, going into this situation with the Penn State defense, there's a chance that Penn State could find themselves down in this football game seven or 14 points before they blink. Now, there's a chance it's zero to zero, and it looks like the Mississippi State game, and that's what good defenses do to good offenses. I'm not saying that's not possible. But a reasonable scenario on the table right now is a 14 to nothing lead by Ole Miss, and how will that change things? The tempo's there. Everything's going. How will that change the way Penn State calls the game offensively? Um, Penn State plays defense, the substitution patterns, 
will they just say, hey, we're going to play that base defense and go? That is going to be the game that is the story during the football game. I mean, that is the game within the game. And whenever Ole Miss really gets going in that way, they can they can rip you apart pretty good. Now, the flip side of that is when Ole Miss doesn't get first downs to start a drive, the offense can bog down. And we've seen in the second and the third quarters of games this season, the offense has kind of bogged down a little bit. Fourth and first and fourth quarter, they've been pretty good, but they have bogged down a little bit in the middle part of the game. We'll see what happens. That's against defense that are used to running against tempo. That's how long it takes them to get acclimated to what is going on. Teams that see it quite frequently, sometimes that first quarter can get you. Sometimes that first quarter can bite you. And then they get in the second and third quarter, and at the end of the game, whenever legs get tired, the tempo again takes off. That's the first and fourth quarter secret. What happens with a team that does not see it very often to where it can't be replicated, to where it can't be really practiced for? It's go- the game is going to go out and start and go. Now, I guess the wild card in all of this and the tempo is, what is the penalty situation is going to be? This is going to be a massive stay on schedule game for Ole Miss as well as Penn State, honestly. But Ole Miss needs to avoid holding penalties, false starts, things like that. There are going to be people in the crowd that are Penn State fans. They travel very well. Ole Miss is going to bring 30,000, 40,000 people to the game, but there's going to be a large contingent wearing white as well. Ole Miss can't afford to get behind the chains against this defense. That is how this defense lives. This is a Manny Diaz attacking defense. They are going to come at you from all angles. They're going to do all they can, but you can't help them out. You have to play clean. No penalties, no turnovers. And then attack them through using counterflow type plays, screens, draws, counterplays. Those plays can affect a Manny Diaz defense. As we all saw, he was in Starkville. He was the defensive coordinator at Mississippi State. Even though he is at Duke, this is going to be an Anthony Poindexter defense, but they're going to be running the same stuff. So we'll see exactly how that goes as well. I'm I'm pretty fired up about everything that is going on around Ole Miss sports at the moment. And that is going to be a major deal. The tempo is going to be the deal moving forward. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. We're just getting started. Stopping the run is important, obviously, um, but we tell you why it's more important in this game. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, It's easy to turn your car to the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So, we talked in the first segment about tempo being the number one key in this football game, and that is the thing to watch for. And, And honestly, tempo in between plays is going to be important, but Ole Miss also needs to vary the tempo after the snap. If you're throwing the football, they need to be 
incorporate, for lack of a better term, one, two, and three-step drops out of the shotgun just so that the defense and that defense that it really, really attacks knows that they do not always have 2.5 seconds to get right over there. And if that happens, I think Ole Miss's offense will look more like it did against LSU and A&M than it did against Georgia and Alabama. So we have an interesting situation defensively because Ole Miss's defensive unit in this football game is going to be very important. And Penn State, when they get the ball, I've told you this all week, when they get the ball, they want to drive it for seven minutes and they want to score a touchdown. That is the ideal drive for Penn State. Ole Miss, they just want to score a touchdown. They don't care how long it takes. Penn State wants the time component in the game as well. They run the ball very effectively. They are not good throwing the ball down the field, and they're not very good on third down at the moment. So it's going to be imperative that Ole Miss bows up against the run. Ole Miss simply cannot afford a game that always goes second and six, third and two, first and ten. Second and six, third and two, first and ten. If that happens, Penn State will chew Ole Miss up in this football game. So Ole Miss needs to get Penn State in third and medium plus, third and six plus. That needs to be the goal. And yes, Penn State's going to convert some of those, but statistically this year, they haven't converted as many as you would think they would in in any third and medium situation. Drew Aller's a good quarterback. Penn State's a talented team. They've recruited very well. They are a blue blood of college football. They are going to come into this game completely ready to play. But if you can stop the run and make it to where these two really good running backs, I mean, you have Nicholas Singleton. He's got 163 carries, 702 yards, about four and a half yards of carry, eight touchdowns. Again, not explosive, but good. And you also have Katron Allen who had 762 carries, almost the carry count is exactly the same. 851 yards, six touchdowns, a little bit more of an explosive running back. He averages a little over five yards per carry. These are the two most important players to keep an eye on when Penn State has the ball. It is going to be imperative on Ole Miss to slow down this running game. You've heard Ole Miss compare this Penn State team to Arkansas, not necessarily by good. Do not hear that. It's a stylistic comparison where the offensive line is very physical. The running backs are physical. They got a huge quarterback. Drew Aller is like 6'5", 240 pounds. That is where that comparison comes from. Drew Aller can run a little bit as well, so don't be a surprise when he takes off. But Ole Miss needs to close the running da- running game down quickly. And they will. And I think they will do this this way. You're going to have Isaac Uku and Jared Ivey playing out on the end. Jared Ivey moved into three tech, three tech later in the season. But I think they're going to want to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more athletic. And you're going to have in the middle J.J. Pegues and Xavion Harris. Those are going to be the front four attacking this Penn State run game. Because the goal is to get Penn State's offense into third and medium plus. That is the goal. They, the, For whatever it is, like five yards is the, the strike through line against Penn State offensively on third downs. So you don't necessarily need third and longs, but you don't need third and shorts either. You need to eliminate the run game. That's the key. Eliminate the run game from third down, and if that happens, you'll be all right. Like I said, Drew Aller, perfectly good quarterback, and I expect him to rise up a little bit as this game goes stylistically. If this game goes the way that I think it will, he's going to rise up a little bit because he has to, and he has the talent to get it done. What I think is going to happen in this football game, I think that Ole Miss is going to jump on Penn State a little bit. And it's a game that could be like 14 to nothing, and it's going to change, and it's going to morph into one of those crazy Um, college football bowl games that we all love. And Drew Aller is going to have to throw the ball around a little bit. I think they're getting a receiver back for this game. A bunch of their defensive players are going to be on pitch counts per Zach Seiko. And it will be really interesting to see as the game goes on, the defense theoretically should get worse. 
So if Ole Miss jumps on them at the very beginning and uses up some of those plays, as it goes on, it should get a little bit worse. I think this is a 34-31 to type football game. The way it's going to end up, it's going to be fun. The fans are going to have a good time. Um, But that's what I think is going to happen in this football game. We'll talk about the score prediction and all that um, a little bit later on. But slowing down the run is of the utmost importance because if Penn State is allowed to do that second and six, third and two, first and ten, second and six, third and two, first and ten, if that is allowed to happen, all of a sudden you're going to have a 21 to 17 type football game. So much of that clock is going to drain off. And do you remember two years ago when Tennessee played Kentucky and Tennessee had 15 minutes of time of possession in that game? Kentucky had the ball for 45 minutes in that football game. That is the Penn State goal here. They want to get first downs. They want to play the game that way to keep Jackson Dart and Quinshawn Judkins and Trey Harris and all of those guys off the field. The way you stop that from happening starts with slowing down the run enough to get to their third down troubles. Then you can get the ball back. It's going to be a game about getting off the field as quickly as you can. I know, shocking, but that's the way this football game is going to play out. I'm excited about that. I I think that it has a really good chance for both teams to play extremely well and have a good time during the ballgame because one thing about Ole Miss football, they have fun. They do things that are fun. This is a fun program, and – that's an advantage that they have in this current environment over most everybody else. You'll see that whenever we get to the bowl game on Saturday. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It comes down to the premier playmakers, doesn't it? And Ole Miss has three of the most important pieces in this game. We'll let you know about that in just a second. Right now, though, I want to let you know that Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS, daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more or less than two to six players on a stats projection and watch the winnings roll in. And if you want to play alongside of some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, you can now find community plays under the Promos tab in the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. You know, testing my skills on Prize Picks this season has been the most exciting thing that I've done and the way that I've handled daily fantasy sports. Heck, if you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few clicks. Click, click. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockedoncollege and use code lockedoncollege for a first deposit matchup to $100. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockedoncollege and use code lockedoncollege for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day, and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the sports of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. Be part of history. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to mention, I think the three most important players in this football game, Ole Miss has. The three game breakers in this football game, Ole Miss has those players. And this isn't denigrating anything on Penn State's roster. It's just not quite there as good as them. I think the best quarterback in this game is Jackson Dart. I don't think it's particularly close. I think Jackson Dart has a chance by the time he leaves Ole Miss to own every single record in the Ole Miss record book. He's a really good football player. I think the best running back on the field, which is going to be a great field of running backs. I, 
Catron Allen and um, Nicholas Singleton are really good backs. I don't think either one of them are good as Quinshawn Judkins. Also, pay attention to Ulysses Bentley the fourth on a fast track indoors. There's a chance that he could be the game breaker that none of us are expecting. And Trey Harris is the best wide receiver by not a small margin in this game. So offensively, there are weapons all over the place. People that you need to score football points, they're lining up on Ole Miss's team. They have the better collection of them. Now, the flip side of that is Penn State probably has the better offensive line, depending on what happens with the left tackle, and probably the better defensive line. Um, even without Chop Robinson. And in a situation of football games, as SEC teams know, the best lines usually win. But those teams that have beaten Ole Miss this year have had the skill players to make Ole Miss hurt. They had the players offensively to make Ole Miss hurt. Like I said, Drew Aller's a good player. Nicholas Singleton's a good one to running back. Ketron Allen's a good running back as well. But nobody on Penn State's offense is going to scare you, just scare you. There's not a Jaden Daniels. There's not an Malik Neighbors. There's not a Carson Beck. Heck, there's not even a Lad McConkey coming out in this game. So Ole Miss should be all right to match up defensively, and we've talked about all the time. Pete Golding this season has feasted on mid-to-bad offenses throughout the schedule. Now, I don't know if this – I don't. I wouldn't call this offense good. Um, I mean, if it were good, they wouldn't have fired their offensive coordinator 10 games into the season. But I wouldn't call them bad. So whenever I say mid-to-bad offenses, I'm not talking about Penn State. I'm just letting you know where Pete Golding says. I think this offense is a mid-plus offense because they've recruited very well, and Nick Singleton, Keetron Allen, and all those guys, they're ready to go. Drowler has a really good chance to be productive. The problem that he has had this year is in games like Ohio State and Michigan, against games with teams with superior talent, that you're going to be in one of these top 10 level showdowns. He has not looked particularly good. Now, that might change. Saturday, you know, you might get out there and draw out and looks all world. But we talked with Zach Seiko and he said that Drew Aller has a little bit of a confidence issue. And I don't know if that's because he reads his clippings. I don't know if people are to him. And what I mean by that is they just decided before it all started that he wasn't very good. And then when he actually does turn the corner, they're not going to come off of that prediction. But if you listen to that, that can affect you. I mean, is it the fact that there isn't just the game-breaking wide receiver that you can go go to? There's not just a guaranteed yard guy downfield. They throw the ball to the tight end a lot, I believe. But I do like Nick Singleton, and I do like Allen. I do think they were very good running backs, and I think they're going to try and use them because they have to, honestly. I mean, in short yardage, they line up in the T formation like the 1952 Maryland Terrapins, and, and, and they let it go. Like I said, they lead the Big Ten in time of possession. Ole Miss does not. I think the magic number for Ole Miss in this football game is probably somewhere between 27 and 28 minutes, and that is Ole Miss running their offense as normal. I'm not talking about playing slowdown or anything like that. I think 27 to 28 minutes of Ole Miss running their stuff is probably going to be required in this football game. Penn State's a good team. Every single Ole Miss football fan going over there should know that Penn State's a good team. And Penn State can win this game. There's probably a Why Penn State Wins video on Zach Seiko's Locked on Nittany Lines as I speak right now. Because they can do it. But following this blueprint that I talked about today, Ole Miss is going to win the football game. And my prediction for the game is Ole Miss 34, Penn State 31. And I do think this game has a chance to get weird, has a chance to get bowl game on us. I think that's why the score is there. I think the tempo is going to affect Penn State's defense which is going to affect the offense. I think this game has a chance to get a little haywire. Now, one benefit that Penn State teams have 
in this situation is that they've had four weeks to get ready for Ole Miss's offense. And there's a lot of window dressing in Ole Miss's offense. They do a lot of things that's a little bit different project and protections. So don't be surprised if Penn State does something defensively early on that kind of hurts what Ole Miss does. Similar to what Vanderbilt did. All of that is on tape. But it's going to come down to the basic stuff. They need to slow down Penn State's run and force them into third and medium and longer. They need to utilize tempo by getting first downs and staying on schedule. That means playing clean. That means no penalties. And they need to run the ball just enough to keep them honest. And Ole Miss has the best three game-breaking athletes on the football field. That is why I think Ole Miss is going to win this football game. And it should be interesting. Tomorrow morning, the pregame show, we're going to release that at 7. That's going to be me with Tom Vanderford. We're not going to do a pregame live stream this week because I overbooked my interviews because I'm super smart. And um, I wasn't going to boot Tom after he um, is going to give his time for everything that's going on. So he'll be the 7 o'clock in the morning video. Immediately after the game, we'll be live streaming like always. And then we'll be back Monday with a little bit of a reset. Today, I'm going over to Orlando to the Under Armour All-American game to get a couple of interviews, have a little fun. Then I'll come back, watch a little Missouri, Ohio State, get ready for the game tomorrow. And on Sunday, I'm going back over there for Under Armour practices as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on right now um, in the whole ether of everything. And then Monday is January 1st, the playoffs, all of that good stuff. So it's going to be a fun weekend of football for me personally, and I hope everybody has a good time with what's going on. If you're heading over to the game versus Penn State and the Peach Bowl, whether you're an Ole Miss fan or a Penn State fan, please be safe heading down to the football game. Nothing is more important than you getting to the game and back. So enjoy that. Be safe as possible and have a great time at the Peach Bowl. And thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen. Every day is tomorrow's pregame show. Tom Vanderford, and we will move closer to a Rebs Hoops matchup against the Tennessee Volunteers that will be absolutely massive. For your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. For your second listen, go to Lockdown Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 stream channel. For those on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Howdy, tidy, everybody. Be safe.